The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1-13. through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so they may not cause one of them to fall. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, verses 21 to 28. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Well, good morning, boys and girls. I hope um, things are going well with being back in school and finding a new normal again after some Christmas break and holiday time, getting used to life again. So in our first lesson, we heard about the word prophet. Does anybody know what a prophet is? We talk about prophets, and some even said Jesus was a prophet, right? Well, a prophet, the Hebrew word for prophet, is spokesperson. Who do you know that's a spokesperson? Your parents, your teachers, so here's a little insight on what we tend to recall prophets. Prophets are biblical characters repeating messages from God. Quite frequently, these messages sound very familiar. Take care of the vulnerable, seek peace, love justice, care for the earth and each other. 
Do you think these are things that you and I can do, our parents can do? Can we take a stand when our neighbor is being bullied? What about when you are at the lunch table or at recess and one of your friends are being mean to somebody else? Can you tell them that that's not okay? And when they still continue, what do you do? You go tell somebody who has authority, but you start because you have authority as a beloved child of God. In baptize, baptism, you were claimed and received the Holy Spirit. And so as prophets, you and I are spokesperson. And we are to share the love of God with our neighbor. And that may be standing up and sharing our voice when others are too afraid to share their voice. I know this is a lot to think about guys, so I'll leave that there today, just for us to think about that you, yep, you, I'm talking about you and me and your mom, we're kind of prophets, not kind of, we are. We are spokespeople, we're spokespersons for God, for Jesus. We are called to share the good news, take care of others, seek peace, love justice, and care for the earth and for each other. Can you guys do that? I know you can. Just know we miss you and we are praying for you. So let us pray. God, thank you for sending us spokespeople or prophets that share your message with us, Lord. Help us notice them in our lives and help us be them in our lives too for others. Help us share your love with our neighbor, care of, take care of the vulnerable, the earth and each other. Thank you, God. Amen.